It's 2022 and Creative Commons is something we maybe don't hear about as photographers quite as much as we did say 15 years ago when we were all on Flickr and it was one of the default licenses we could choose from. I'm here today with Nate from the Creative Commons organization for an update on Creative Commons and to talk about what it means for photographers right now. Here we go. Hey everyone, Aaron here from techphotoguy.com. I today am with Nate Angel, who is with Creative Commons, and I've known Nate for, I don't know, probably 15 years now. We've been crossing paths in the tech scene in the Portland, Oregon area. Today, we're going to talk about his new role with the organization and what's up with Creative Commons. So uh, welcome, Nate. Thanks for thanks for being here. <laughs> oh, sure. Gosh, I feel like uh, it's just like hanging out with a neighbor basically except we haven't had a chance to actually get together very recently well yeah so, thanks for thanks for inviting me i really appreciate it um and i just uh you know obviously still here in portland but i took a new role uh, at creative commons as director of communications and community it's my official title um and i just started in may so still fairly new mm -hmm. on the job um and uh yeah i'm know that a lot of your work has intersected with obviously <laughs> photography and I know that you've open licensed a lot of work that you've done uh so I was really uh excited to get a chance to come talk to you yeah yeah so uh, communications and community at creative commons so I guess first of all in case there are some people who are watching this who aren't familiar with creative commons I mean I guess what's the what's the high level version of what is creative commons and how does it matter to photographers <laughs> Yeah, well, it's actually, I mean, the, the amazing thing about it is it's a relatively old organization in internet years. We've been around, we're actually celebrating our 20th anniversary uh, this year. Um, so it's been around for a while. It's a nonprofit global organization. And it was originally started to um, kind of um, try to make an intervention in copyright law and help people use copyright law in a kind of judo-like move to actually give people permissions to reuse their work uh, without having to ask, right? And so a lot of folks may have seen Creative Commons licenses attached to works like photographs um, that say things like CC BY or CC Attribution, which is a license that says, hey, this work is mine, I own it, I, I own the copyright, but I would like to give other people the right to share it and use it in other ways. And the only requirement I have with the CC BY license is that you attribute me as, the owner and author mm -hmm. of the work. And then there's various flavors of those licenses and so forth um, that you can, you can put other uh, sort of boundaries around how you're willing to share your work. But it's basically a way to say, without giving up control of your work, mm -hmm. it's a way to give people a strong signal about how they can also use your work without having to like write and ask you or pass contracts mm -hmm. back and forth about it and so forth. So it's it's basically a way to make um sharing on the internet especially um uh less, you know, less with give it less friction, you know, make it less less filled with friction. And so that's been going on for 20 years. There's now billions of works on 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 the internet that are that are shared openly including very large bodies like Wikipedia is all shared with mm -hmm. with Creative Commons licenses and many other many other really essential resources. Um, and so a lot of what we do at Creative Commons is we maintain the infrastructure to make that keep happening. So the legal tools, the education, the being involved in policy work to make sure that mm -hmm. um, laws don't change <laughs> to make things happen differently. Um, and Makes then sense. looking ahead, there's a bunch of new stuff too, but we could talk about that more. Yeah, later. yeah. Well, we'll get into that. Yeah. So yeah. that makes sense, right? So it's a set of licenses to make it easy for folks to, you know, put some of their work out into the world and make it easier for people to use it, you know, either as is or remix it, um, depending on the license you choose, you know, at least here in the US and a lot of other countries, you know, copyright by default is that, you know, you control what can happen with that and people need to get permission to, to use that in most ways. But on the other hand, I know, you know, I know there are some photographers who are, you know, they're, they're maybe hesitant about using a Creative Commons license because they, they maybe mistakenly think it's like public domain, right? Where you're giving up all your rights to something and that's, that's not the case. Um, and so that's a good, that's kind of a good introduction. And I feel like in the photography world, you know, we used to hear about Creative Commons pretty frequently when Flickr was really prevalent. Um, you know, if we go back 15 years or so, I would say 
it seemed like every photographer who was publishing a lot of stuff online, many people were doing that through Flickr. Uh, it was, you know, a community of photographers, you know, by photographers for photographers before they got sold to uh, you know, Yahoo and kind of maybe lost their way. Um, but at the time, when you put your work onto Flickr, you very explicitly chose what license you wanted to use. And, you know, you could keep it all rights reserved, you know, kind of the default U.S. copyright law. Uh, but it also let you choose from, you know, the handful of Creative Commons licenses that were available at the time. And I feel like as Flickr has become less and less prevalent amongst the photography community, you know, at least personally, I haven't like crossed paths with Creative Commons as much as I used to, right? When somebody uploads to most of the common sites that people upload their photos to now, they're not making a licensing decision that really gets displayed anywhere when you put your work on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter or Pinterest or any of that. Um, and so I guess one question I would ask is, you know, from where you sit, do you feel like Creative Commons is... Are other people feeling the same kind of thing I am where it feels like, you know, you don't hear about it as much anymore? I mean, is it still, you know, does it seem like it's still going strong with the same communities or has it become something that's maybe fallen into a bit of obscurity? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's that's a really good question. And it's, um, you know, we can think about it in different ways, I think. So, I mean, first of all, you're, you're absolutely right that Flickr, which still exists and still mm -hmm. actually has a commitment to open licensing and to photographers as I understand it although not yeah, being yeah. A, a professional myself like you I, I um, I'm not as aware of the different you know kind of tools that y'all are using today and be interested to hear more about that but um yeah I mean if anything Creative Commons is probably more vibrant now than than it was okay. back in the day when we were young um <laughs> uh you know maybe maybe not among that particular sub community and so I guess one thing that we could talk about maybe a little bit more is just um you know the, the specifically for your audience, which is primarily photographers, right, is, right. is sort of what's, you know, what's at stake? <laughs> why would mm -hmm. one even, why would one even get involved in the licensing question, right? Because I, I imagine that, especially for a lot of independent photographers, the biggest concern more is people pirating your work and using it, using it without your permission, right? Yeah. And I think, yeah, let, I mean, that's probably a great place to start, right? Because as a photographer, you know, in the US, by default, I own the copyright to my work, I can control what's done with it, you know, other than a few kind of narrow exceptions that are carved out in the law. Um, you know, basically, you can't do anything with my photos without my permission, essentially, if I'm a, you know, a professional photographer, or even just someone who's serious about my photography as a hobbyist, why would I want to you know, open up to an open license, you know, where people are going to be able to do stuff that I may not e ever even find out about, right? Like what's, um, you know, what's the benefit to that, right? I, you know, maybe this sounds selfish, but like, what's in it for me? What's, what's the good right. that comes from that? <laughs> no, I think that's a good way to think about it because nobody's, I mean, very few people are going to do anything if they don't get something from it. And that could be different things. It could be money. It could be satisfaction. It could mm -hmm. be, you know, all sorts of different kinds of things. But, um, and so, you know, getting to the motivation of it, I think is, is crucial. One thing that the place that I start, of course, is that the internet itself is, is a giant sharing machine, right? <laughs> it's, it's not right. designed really to, to help lock things down. Now, of course, there's been all sorts of things added to the internet to help, you know, keep things more locked down. But right. I mean, as a photographer, I imagine, you know, anytime you post uh, a piece of your work online, almost in any format, you know, it sort of becomes immediately available to a whole host of, you know, unprivileged use, you know. Right, right. Regardless of what I want to happen with it, you know, the reality is if you put something on the internet, someone can steal it. I would frame uh, the question of adding open licensing to your work, not so much in terms of whether that's going to provide different controls around uh, whether people are going to abuse your work or not mm -hmm. or misuse your right. work, but it's actually more about, um, you know, you as a creator uh, sort of being really clear about uh, the places that you do want to authorize, the ways in which you do want to authorize your work to be used. So it's it's more about, in a way, um, it's more of a communication thing than like a, a boundaries and privileges thing, if, if you get what I'm, where I'm headed. Yeah, that makes sense because ultimately a license, whether it be a, you know, 
traditional license negotiated in private between me and somebody who wants to license my photo or a Creative Commons license that I put out there publicly with my photo, you know, the license will keep the honest people honest, right? If somebody really wants to steal your work, it doesn't really matter what license you put on it, probably, mm -hmm. because they're going to find a way to steal that work. Um, yeah. And that's, you know, I think that is something that's important to keep in mind is that, um, you know, when you choose a Creative Commons license, you know, you're helping establish, you know, what am I okay with? What do you need to talk to me about? I know one of the, you know, one of the Creative Commons licenses, and this one, you know, I think was one of the, you know, one of the ones you used to see all the time on Flickr, um, you know, was putting it out there, you know, with attribution, letting people, you know, remix it or whatever, but for non-commercial purposes, right? And so, um, and that's usually the license that I'd used in, you know, when I put work out there as well, right? It's like, hey, take this, have fun with it. You know, if you want to use it on your personal website, you want to use it for a desktop wallpaper or whatever, great, go for it. Um, you know, but don't start making prints and selling my work, right? <laughs> yeah, um, and, right, which and, is the main concern as a photographer. So you don't want somebody like they don't, you don't want them to take livelihood away from you, right? Right, right. You made a good point, you know, at the beginning of that kind of last answer there is that, you know, the internet is a platform of open stuff. And, you know, more and more we're seeing, and I feel like maybe even in the last few years we've seen, more explicit kind of remix culture even become more prevalent, which has obviously been around for a very long time online, you know, but when we start looking at things like some of the, you know, the memes that go around on TikTok and we, you know, things like that, right, which, you know, I'm, I'm too old for TikTok, but, <laughs> but, you know. But it actually has built in remixing really, like, I mean, a remix right. is like a core part of the functionality, right? Exactly. And so, you know, it seems like a Creative Commons license on our work is a way that someone can say, hey, I'm cool with this. Yes, please take this, build upon it, use it, you know, to make something else interesting without having to like just say, hey, this is now a free for all, do whatever the heck you want with it. Right. So, so that makes yeah, sense. Yeah. I mean, I put a couple of other uh, nuances on this discussion. I think we're, this is exactly where I would, I would want to see the discussion head. Um, because as we all know, as, you know, not only is the internet a giant sharing machine where people can, you know, take or steal or whatever, or use work sort of, um, you know, without control, but mm -hmm. I mean, copyright law isn't, isn't really a, it's a tool that is really only useful to you if you have lawyers, right? It's not like there are police out there helping to catch copyright thieves, right? right. <laughs> it's like if, if you yourself feel that someone has violated your copyright, you yourself could put together the resources to make a claim that, 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 that you know, your work has been misused. Um, so it's not as if, um, you know, copyright is a, is a, there's not, it doesn't right. provide a great, you know, shield wall of protection for people. <laughs> right. That's one of the things I've run into over the years, you know, having a lot of my work on the internet and having had people and organizations occasionally use that in ways that, you know, maybe they shouldn't have, you know, is that for the most part, legit organizations will license work in legit ways, whether that's directly with the artist, whether that's through Creative Commons, whether that's, you know, purchasing the image through a stock website or whatever, you know, whatever it is, right, is like you said, when that doesn't happen, you know, then you have to, I mean, the first decision you have to weigh is like, how much do I care about this? Is it even worth the hassle to go through, right? Because, yeah. you know, U.S. copyright law as it applies to, you know, photos, for example, specifically, right, is with the caveat that there were some changes to this about a year ago, but, you know, you're filing a federal copyright lawsuit. Um, if you haven't previously registered the images with the copyright office, um, you know, all you can seek are statutory damages. You can't even seek punitive damages if you haven't previously registered it. Best case scenario, I mean, if you have registered it, it's like, okay, well, lawyer up because you're going to federal court. And so yeah. for a small independent photographer, a lot of times, you know, maybe you send a threatening letter or a threatening email, but if the recipient box or argues it's like are you going to follow through with with that legal remedy yeah. um and so 
you know. And especially, I mean, like you say, you know, the good actors are generally going to act good. Maybe they need a reminder to act good every once mm -hmm. in a while, but they'll generally like good. The bad actors aren't going to be stopped by anything you do short of taking them to court, which is, you know, a lengthy and expensive process. Right. So, right. So if we look at putting stuff out there, you know, not necessarily being, you know, in a Creative Commons license, you know, not as much for protection, but more of, you know, hey, I want to put this out there. I want to make it easier for people to do that you know, to kind of circle back to the, the Flickr side of things, sure. um, you know, yes, Flickr has been now purchased by SmugMug, which, I mean, they're a great company run by photographers um, trying to do good things with Flickr. It's still alive and kicking. They're making improvements to it. Um, but, you know, when we talk about kind of where is the mind share and market share, it's not where it used to be. How important is it for online publishing platforms to make it easy for photographers to specify a license for their work, right? I mean, I, I can't help but think that if Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, you know, Glass, whatever, you know, photo site that is hot this week, <laughs> um, right. you know, made it easier for people to choose a license, I feel like that you know, that would make it easier for photographers to, you know, more easily kind of embrace creative comment. Are there, I mean, to your knowledge in the photo space, other than, other than Flickr, <laughs> which still allows for creative commons licensing, you know, sure. other than Flickr, I mean, are there any other like online social media publishing photo sites that you know that make it easy to specify that your work is creative commons license at this point or not really? Well, I'm going to admit that actually you probably know more than I do. Okay. Because, okay. You know, I, I haven't, I, I'd actually be, I was going to ask you, like <laughs> maybe even getting back to the question of what's in it for me. Right. Um, so as a, as an independent professional photographer, you know, what, what kind of tools are you using? Because I mean, obviously one can post a photo to Instagram, right. Right. But that's not, that's not your main professional tool. That's more of a marketing tool. Right. 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 Yeah. I'm what what I mean, tools do, are you using? For most photographers, you know, if they're doing it, you know, either professionally or as a serious hobbyist, you know, um, you know, usually what I find is, you know, folks have some sort of web presence, you know, often it's just kind of their website that has galleries on it, you know, a WordPress site, a Squarespace site, maybe they're sure. using a service like Smug Mug or Zenfolio that's kind of photo gallery focused, but also allows you to build out kind of the rest of a website. Um, and then they're you know, they're all over social media, right? Whether that's right. Instagram or Twitter or Facebook or, you know, whatever the, the the networks they're on are. With those gallery sites, though, you know, what I'm what I'm seeing is, you know, you're kind of on your own, right? As far as what you want to do from a licensing perspective. And that, you know, they just provide an interface where, you know, hey, I maybe I've got a square squarespace site and I want to upload a bunch of photos to a gallery. Right. You know, right. I, I'm not specifying a license with those. Now I can put text on the page that says, hey, I'm licensing these, you know, as, you know, Creative Commons, you know, non-attribution, non-commercial, you know, attribution, non-commercial share alike or whatever. But, right. um, you know, but it's not, you know, it's not like an explicit, you know, feature of the system to kind of say, choose a license. <laughs> um, right. You know, and it it seems like it's one of those things where, if if collectively we think it's good to have photographers maybe make more explicit choices about their licensing, <laughs> you know, the more that systems like online photo galleries, social media sites, things like that can make it easier for photographers to do so, the better shape we're going to be in. Yeah, so. I mean, and that's going back to the question of sort of what's in it for me, like, you know, one thing that we do at Creative Commons is work with distribution entities, publishers, whatever you want to call them, mm -hmm. platforms to try to embed, uh, you know, licensing options into them. And, you know, with more or less success, probably the other one that comes to mind that's that's quite prevalent now is uh, YouTube. Oh, right. right? Yeah. Which, which still has um, <laughs> open licensing built into it. Um, and of course, another um, project that I'm sure you've probably heard about is um, it started at Creative Commons actually, but now has moved to WordPress. Is what they're calling the Openverse. Now. Yeah. Have you heard about the Openverse? Yes, I have heard about the Openverse, and you know, and and I've heard about it. I haven't dove really deep into it. I know, you know, my impression of it, and you can probably expound on this, is essentially that it's, you know, a, 
looking for a solution to essentially kind of just create an open body of work where people can contribute photos, videos, whatever they want, you know, into that open forum so that others can then use, build upon things like that. Yeah. And it's even, I mean, even more, it really started and as essentially a, a kind of search engine in a way. Um, so it's, it's basically a way uh, because it's now so tightly integrated into WordPress, right? Mm -hmm. It's a way to kind of have a library of content, whether that be, you know, photos and they're, you know, they're advancing now to also include um, audio. And I think video would probably come eventually as well. Mm -hmm. So that you sort of have this library, the searchable library at your disposal that you can pull in, like when you're offering something in the WordPress environment. Right. And then you'll know the the license that you would have to, to reuse that work. And so it's it's sort of like, you know, a kind of stock photo service, if you will, but a stock photo service that where everything is openly licensed or in the public domain. Um, right. And the, so the beauty of that, of course, like stepping aside from photographers for a second and just thinking about creators, people who are building mm -hmm. websites and doing other things, right? Is it gives you this library of material where you understand your licensing relationship to it without having to be, right. you know, a trained lawyer or something, right? You know, this is a, a project that started it and was incubated basically and initiated it at Creative Commons. And then it's moved over to the WordPress community now, which is great because those are the people who are really the right kind of technical stewards to, to advance it and move it forward. And they have done so. And with all the innovations to WordPress recently, it's now become a, you know, more readily available in the WordPress interface too. Mm -hmm. So you do sort of have this really rich open library right there at your disposal. You need a picture for, you know, to decorate your post. Um, right. let's say it's kind of like right there. And you also know the degree to which you know, you're, you know that you can be a good citizen in using it rather than just arbitrarily stealing a work and making, you know, Aaron Hockley in Portland, Oregon mad because you've stolen his work without permission. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah. And that's the bane of the photographer's existence on the internet has been Google image search, right? Because you put right. your work online and then invariably at some point, somebody who's looking for a photo of, you know, whatever it is, whether it's a bridge or a sunset or a kids playing in the park or whatever, they're just right. going to go Google, Google image search. They're going to look for it. They're going to find the image. They're going to save it from there. The licensing yeah. is, you know, non-existent. Um, and yes. even for the people who know about Google's like advanced tools to filter by image, right, they don't right. actually work that well. <laughs> and so, right. you know, you still yeah. end up with images included there that aren't openly licensed, you know, um, whereas the open verse is um, actually using uh kind of machine level metadata about mm -hmm. openly licensed works to make sure that it's really only including open licensed works. So it's a much more rigorous. Yeah. And that makes sense. And I think it's interesting, you know, we've had multiple things kind of intersect over the last, I don't know, say 15 years where, you know, I feel like if you go back to, I don't know, 2000, or I guess 20 years ago, you know, 2000, 2005 in that range, you know, the internet was finally widely available. Broadband was becoming a, a mainstream thing in the U.S. Um, you know, photographers were putting a lot of work online. Photographers were starting to see that work stolen online. <laughs> in, in, as soon as they put it on, they started to see it stolen. Right? right, you know, and I think the mindset at that point was, well, you know, I'm a photographer, I'm the one who made this work, I'm the one, you know, who can do this, you know, and these people are stealing it from me. But what we're now seeing, and, you know, we've seen this in different ways in the photography industry, right? But the reality is now, if you fast forward 20 years, it, it's 2022, we've all got smartphones in our pockets and have amazing cameras on them. Everybody's a photographer, uh, you know, and so- Even me. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's a photographer. And a lot of times- the question is not, well, do I go find a photo to license or whatever? It's like, do I just take a picture on my own and use that, right? And so, you know, as photographers, I feel like we want to protect our rights to our images, but I also feel like sometimes photographers will have maybe a, a distorted and overinflated view of the uniqueness or specialness or something of their work you know, thinking that if somebody doesn't license it from them, you know, in a traditional way, that that person's missing out and that person doesn't have any good other options. Because the reality is, 
there's a lot of uh, good other options. The other thing that's happened is, you know, open versus side, there's sites like uh, Unsplash. There's, you know, all the, I mean, and if you, even if you're willing to spend a little bit of money, there's all the micro stock websites where you can go license an image for, you know, pennies, literally. And so right. if somebody's not licensing an image directly from a photographer for some non-pennies number, it's not like they can't find a cheap or free photo anywhere else. <laughs> yeah. They're, even and, if they, and they want to be a good, legitimately, actor, they, there's a million options. Right. Yeah, right. I mean, legitimately. Right. They don't even have to yeah. steal it. Right. They can go right. use one of the legitimate free photo services, you know, I mean, like, you know, the open verse, like the WordPress photo directory, like unsplash, you know, or they can license a stock image for dirt cheap. Right. It's one of the reasons yeah. why stock photography is not really a big money maker anymore, unless somebody has been in it for a long time and has, quite a historical library built up. Yeah. So I was going to actually say that, you know, going back to this question of what's in it for me as a photographer, kind of stepping back and thinking about like, what is it, where is it that I actually add value to the world? Right. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, what is it that I like, let's say that I'm trying to make money off what I do, you know, where, what is the actual value there? And I go back to thinking about even, I don't know if you remember the post from a million years ago now by the, um, by John Perry Barlow, one of the, I'm not a deadhead, but he was one of the Grateful Dead lyricists. Um, And, you know, just talking, he was talking more in the music context, but it's Mm -hmm. like, you know, recordings of music became one of the fundamental, well, first sheet music and then recordings became like one of the fundamental ways that musicians made money. Mm -hmm. But with the internet, when recordings and and sheet music just became, again, like very easy to distribute and cheap to distribute, you know, musicians have to step back and think about, you know, what is the real value that I bring to the world? And in many cases, he was arguing at least that it's, it's live performance. Mm-hmm. Because live performance, well, there are ways to obviously distribute live performances over the internet too, right. but there are also things that are a little bit more easy to control and being mm-hmm. actually physically present, pandemic aside, at a musical event is a completely different experience than watching a YouTube video, right? And so for, for photographers, it's not maybe as easy of a question, but the question then does become like, what is it that I do that's different from stock photographs mm-hmm. that are on the web right. that anybody can right yeah and that's a question that photographers you know ask themselves all the time right and that's you know how do you answer it (laughs) well you know what is it that i do that's special and you know and looking at it in context of you know why would a client hire me versus why would a client go to a stock website versus why would a client just do it themselves right Right, which is you know which is you know often intern with an iphone right yeah that's often my biggest competitor now you know And I feel like with all of this, maybe when we talk about kind of what's in it for us or why should we, why should we consider an open license? um, You know, I think maybe there's an argument that sometimes it's, you know, a way that we can just contribute to society, right? Like do the right thing. And um, actually I'll, I'll, I'll put a little link up above to a discussion I had a couple weeks ago on this YouTube channel uh, with David Ulrich, who published a book recently called The Mindful Photographer. And in talking with him, you know, and one of the themes in his book was that as photographers, the camera that we have can make pictures that are very impactful and can impact, you know, share what's going on around us and impact how we handle the future of our world, right? Whether that's a cause around climate change or racial equality or another, you know, social justice issue or whatever those things are. War, right? So many photographs have had such a huge impact in war. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, for a photographer who wants to use their camera in a way to make an impact in the world, it seems like an open license of some sort would be a natural fit, right? If you're looking to get your work out there to maybe have the biggest impact, why wouldn't I want it to be able to get out there in as many ways as possible? Yeah. And, and, and what you're doing there too, I mean, in a way, it's, you could view it as a kind of marketing tool because what you're saying to the good actors, right, is mm-hmm. you are free to use my work under these circumstances, but there's always the uh, attribution is a basic component of all the mm-hmm. Creative Commons licenses. So your name is should, as long as someone is a, a good actor, mm-hmm. they're going to 
be attaching your name to your work. And so it's sort of a way to promote yourself beyond, you know, other uses. So like any, if let's say Aaron Hockley open licenses a really great photo and it gets widely used every place it used, it should also not only mention that you're the author, but link back to your source for that image. Again, the good, you know, there's no right. police force out there. Right. Like Creative Commons right. doesn't have a, a police force that, you know, forces people to take them down when they don't do it right. But that's how it's supposed to work. Right, uh -huh. right. Yeah. And I mean, because ultimately, you know, ultimately a Creative Commons license is just a license, right? It's just yeah. like, you know, you'd contacted me directly and was like, hey, I want to use your photo for this purpose. And we wrote up a little short little contract that said, yeah. yes, you have the permission to use this photo. I mean, they essentially are and legal contracts that just anyone can use right. by putting a mark on their work. Yeah. Right. And so if somebody doesn't abide by that contract, it's the same as if they didn't abide by any other license. It's the same as if they didn't abide with, you know, not having a license at all, or we can't fix, you know, people who are going to do the wrong thing, <laughs> you know, necessarily with a photo license. And, you know, at least up until this point, we haven't come up with a, a technological solution to prevent people from doing the wrong thing because we all know there've been so many different, you know, image protection, DRM, different types of schemes that have been tried over the years. But ultimately we keep kind of falling back on if you put it on the internet in some way, somebody's going to be able to copy it if they really want to. <laughs> right. And, and I guess there's another side of this too that I that I like to bring up a little bit is, yeah. you know, we've been so far talking about this mostly in the context of like an individual artist, right? An, right, right. An individual photographer. But there are so many other cases where open licensing can make, you know, a big impact for collective work. So, I mean, mm -hmm. I think NASA actually popped into my mind, right? So NASA is a U.S. government agency that we as taxpayers all fund, right? Right. right? And they take amazing pictures that no one else can take <laughs> right, actually, right? right? Because not all of us have tools to fly around space right. um, yet, right? Yet, but <laughs> yeah. so we'll soon have our way. Um, <clears throat> and so the fact that, uh, I mean, actually, because their government works, they actually are technically in the public domain, mm -hmm. as I understand it, although I'm not a lawyer. Um, right. But, yep. you know, it's not clear about that. And so when a government agency like NASA openly licenses its image, it sends a really clear message that what you can do with these images. Um, and, and Creative Commons also provides a tool to make it really clear when something is in the public domain too, because mm -hmm. that's not always clear right. either. So we, we have, it's called a dedication to the public domain. So if you actually want to force something into the public domain, even though copyright would, would have you not right. do that, <laughs> you can do that as well. I mean, this topic of licensing and how do we share our work and, you know, certainly we can get deep into philosophical discussions of the value of allowing our work to be shared and remixed and all that, but hopefully they would consider an open license for their work. I mean, I will, I'll drop a link down below to the Creative Commons website where they can take a look at the, the different licenses that are available and kind of see which one maybe feels like it's the right one for them. I was actually just getting to know uh, a new uh, project that's, it's actually illustrators, not photographers, mm -hmm. but a very similar situation, right? Like right. people visual, who Visual works. art, yes. Right, it's visual art. Um, and they might argue that it takes them longer to produce their illustrations than it does the photographer to take a picture I mean, sometimes. Although, most photographs only take like a fraction of a second, really. I mean, so. <laughs> right, but there's all those years of expertise that goes into <laughs> exactly, that fraction of a exactly. second, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> I can share some links with you about it too. But, um, you know, again, this is a way where um, illustrators, visual artists are saying, I have created some works. And in this case, they're illustrations for much more specific things, right? I mean, as, it could be as specific as a stock photography of like, I would like a pigeon pecking at the letter A or whatever, you know, right? You can imagine very specific photographs mm -hmm. as well. But, um, but they've actually contributed them on purpose openly. Uh, for particular causes. So like global climate change, for example, as an example, you know, all the organizations and people that are working to combat global climate change, you know, it's helpful to them to have a, a basically a database of openly licensed illustrations that they can use to help make their work more impactful. And so a group of artists has banded together to publish those works with open licenses. And, you know, photographers can and, and, and are, I think, already doing that same kind of thing. And so there's an incentive there that goes back to your, how can I make an impact in the world mm -hmm. argument? I think the selfish reason still is it's really a marketing tool. I mean, you see, uh, you know, artists um, like 
<clears throat> of words like Cory Doctorow, who you may know as a novelist and, and thinker, right. um, you know, who, who, who does a lot of work that's both, you know, fully copyrighted and uses the normal publishing mechanisms and he earns the money from it. Right. But then he also has openly published works um, mm -hmm. that, you know, that are, that are, that are free to use in, in other ways. So, you know, there, there are people, there are artists already, uh, figuring out new ways to act in the world that understand that the internet has changed things and that that therefore the way that they're going to interact with their art and and the internet has also changed yeah and i think that's a good point is you know any even with the photography industry we see this there are you know i would still say a vast majority of photography professionals make a majority of their income by, you know, clients hiring them to perform services or by selling work to clients. But photographers, they're also looking at new and different revenue models, right? They're looking at patronage. They're looking at, you know, people becoming, you know, subscribers to a series of things they're going to do. They're looking at, you know, branching out and choosing to license some of your work through an open license doesn't preclude you from doing any of that. It doesn't preclude you from using that same work in other for-profit ways, right? Just because I put a photo out as Creative Commons doesn't mean I can't sell somebody a wall print of that right for hundreds of dollars right definitely it, not you still own the copyright it's exactly. you're not giving the copyright away exactly and i think that's you know i think that's something where maybe photographers you know sometimes will you know they'll think of it maybe a little too black and white either i give it away for free or i make money with it and it's right like, well or and it different works can have different situations right like maybe maybe you want to have a couple works that are really more for advertising mm -hmm. <laughs> that that show off how good you are at your craft and you do openly license them because you want them spread far and wide but that doesn't mean you have to openly license your entire you know oeuvre to use the fancy french word you know you referenced that you know when we first crossed paths you know 15 years ago i mean i i put a lot at of work fire on the mountain i might add <laughs> fire on the mountain or the green dragon you know one of those yeah. good good Portland uh, establishments. Um, you know, yeah, I put a lot of work up on the web at that time, especially around some of the indie tech events that were going on in Portland. And a lot of that was all, you know, Creative Commons licensed where people who came to the events could use those photos for, you know, social media or profile pictures and things like that. I also ended up having a lot of those same people end up hiring me to make images right, for right. them, you know, for money, right? And right. so just because I put some of the work out there with a Creative Commons license doesn't mean that, you know, oh, I'm now just a charity photographer who does everything for free. And so yeah, yeah. I, th I think that's one of the key takeaways. If, you know, if people have listened to this and they're thinking about, oh, well, maybe I should consider doing that, you know, is just think about, you know, what makes sense for your work and what, what parts of your work would make sense to put out there with an open license to let people discover you, learn more about you, see your capabilities, you know, and just know that that doesn't have to be everything you do. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, one might even think about like, you know, as a photographer, maybe I'll make a special collection that, that is my openly licensed work mm -hmm. precisely because I do want to have an impact in some arena, right, you know, what, right. whatever it is yeah. and, and, and actually make those spread wide. But then, like you say, it could lead to other work in other ways. Right. Yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. like the creative commons might hire a photographer for an event, pay them, of course, but we would want to openly license the images because we want people to spread and right. use the images right. from our event. Yeah. Yeah. That all makes sense. Cool. Well, Hey, this was a great chat. It was good to talk about creative commons and where it's at now. And you know, to dive into some of the nuance there, because again, it's it's not just like, oh, it's giving all my work away for free. I would hope photographers would check it out. You know, like I said, I'll, I'll drop a link below to the Creative Commons website. It's creativecommons.org. Is that correct? That is Good right. Deal. It's, and that's... It couldn't be simpler. And there's all, you know, there's other ways that people can get involved. Um, I'll send you links if in case you want to include them in some way. Oh, sure. Uh, thing. To yeah. like other things we've talked about, like Openverse or whatever. But yeah, um, yeah, that would be great. We'll we'll drop all those links down below so you guys can check that out. Okay, great. Perfect. I'll pass. Thank you on. for your time today, Nate. It was great chatting with you. Um, we'll have to catch up in person again here soon, given that we do live, you know, just across the river from each other. Yeah. Um, really. And uh, thanks again for talking Creative Commons and for everybody watching. Uh, again, be sure to subscribe. You'll get the next video. It should be back here next week for you with another tech photo topic. Take care.
Thanks, Aaron. Cheers.